Good afternoon and welcome to Conversations on Showing Up for Kids. My name is Tim Markle. I'm director of the Children's Resource Center South, part of the Wisconsin Wayfinder Network. Um, we are here today to have a casual conversation with our family panel and with anybody else who joins us um, about taking care of yourself on a budget, self-care on a budget. Like, how do you take care of yourself on a budget? You know, when you can't find that babysitter, you don't want to trust a babysitter with your kiddo. I mean, we've all been through times where money has been tight. And so we want to see if we can generate some ideas that we can share with other families. Um, and so we welcome in. We have two members of our family panel. Uh, Pearl and Amanda are here today. And I'm just wondering if either of you would like to start off with why why are we even talking about this and any ideas that you might have? Oh, I, I guess me, that. I have to yeah, go. Pearl is voluntarily telling you, Amanda. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, I think because we are constantly taking care of other people, um, somebody has to take care of us. And unfortunately, we also pretty much bear that responsibility too. So I think we have to, if we can't take care of, show up for our kids and our family, they're not going to get everything they need. So we have to take care of ourselves also. And even maybe just as importantly. hundred percent agree, Amanda. Um, and it's tough, right? Because, you know, the resources aren't always available. Right. Um, sometimes we don't live near family or we don't have um, friends that get the different needs that our kids might have compared to their children. Or uh, we don't feel comfortable asking for help. Like that's always a big one I find um, for me is being able to say I need help because then I feel like I'm failing. Um, and I'm not, I just, but like the feeling's still there. Like, oh, I'm not yeah, doing exactly. everything. The, the, the feeling's still there. And that is, that's such a big thing to get over is that having to, not having to, there, there I go again, but wanting yeah. to ask for help. Please continue before I interrupted you. I just want to, no, go, yes, yes, yes. Please talk more about that, Pearl. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's tough, right? Because where it's kind of like we're given this vision of what a mom's supposed to be, right? Or a parent is supposed to be. I mean, not just moms, but dads too, right? But we're supposed to just be these all sacrificing, all giving, you know, have the children have more than what we had growing up and give our 100%. And nobody ever talks about how that affects us um it's hard and and so you look around and especially on social media you never see moms really posting like oh my goodness I just really needed a me day and so I you know I called for a backup and like you know my mom showed up with a bottle of wine or something and told me to just run away or you know like you don't see that it's always just like oh look at me and my kids you know we we went and we did you know um we toured the museum and then we went and walked the botanical garden and then we went to the zoo and, you know, yeah, there were meltdowns, but I'm totally fine. You you never see the ugliness. So it's hard then to remember and realize that just because you need to ask for help doesn't mean that you're feeling in something. Um, if anything, it makes you stronger for realizing your limitations and reaching out to your support system. I mean, we always want our kids to be able to advocate for themselves and ask for help too. So why aren't we showing that as an example? Um, so, so that's the newest t-shirt, by the way, um, the newest t-shirt that you just came up with asking for help oh, is not failing. That's right. That, so we're going to, we're going to include that. needs to be a t-shirt. I, I like it. I think it should also be a decal for a car, um, bumper sticker, even let's, let's make this happen. Um, I will say for me, um, my support system is, is different than probably most people's. Um, I'm originally from Texas. 
So I don't have family um, up here, right? Um, so my support system is one that I have created. And if you've looked at previous conversations where we talk about having that mom fear, right? Like that's that's what I have. I have my my tribe of girls that I rely on. Um, but before I had them, it was me and my husband. And it's hard, Wayne, you know, how do I get this break without putting too much on, you know, my partner and single parents have it even harder because then, you know, they don't have that partner to really rely on. And so to work on a budget for a break, you have to get creative. One thing I found for me was it was worth mentally for me to recharge, giving up an extra hour of sleep to do something that I enjoyed. Um, and and it's not like I did that every night, but I would do it um, like on a Friday night or a Saturday night when I didn't have to wake up so early to get the kids up, you know, if, if I knew they were going to sleep in or whatever. And it was simple things. In the, in the summer, I'd light up. A, you know, a campfire outside and kind of just do some stargazing. And, and I found that very relaxing and recharging for me. It's something that I enjoyed doing. Um, another thing that I did was um, I always wanted to do those fancy spa baths that I saw all these like Pinterest moms <laughs> doing where like they had like the wine and the the candles and the what and I was like well I can do that I can get creative I can go to Delatra which is the fancy way of saying Dollar Tree because then it sounds fancy like you say Target instead of Target right so I would go to Delatra and I would grab some some candles and some you know the fake rose petals because I'm not trying to make a bigger mess for myself to clean up after I relax I want something that I can either vacuum up or just easily throw away and so going to Dollar Tree to get the stuff, it I was able to get things less than $5 and, and use them multiple uses, but still getting, you know, the same type of ambiance, I guess, as you would like in the spa. And so I would put like white noise or meditation music on my smartphone. And... um. Ironically, I have those, um, the smart bulbs, so I can change the color of the light in my bathroom. Um, so I would just change it to like a soft, you know, like orange and just kind of make it seem like, you know, I'm still in the sun, but it was just getting really creative on what could I do. And my goal is always, because I'm very competitive. How can I get what I need for under 20 bucks? And coupons are my best friend and birthday free stuff is always another good one um even if it's simple as like getting your free coffee from starbucks on your birthday or you know getting your free donut from you know krispy kreme or or whatever like take advantage of the free stuff that you get it might cost you time because nothing is ever free but you have to remember time is one of the most valuable assets that you have. And why shouldn't you spend that on yourself? You're worth it. And so that's kind of what I think. Thanks. You guys have had some good starting off points for this conversation. Um, please, everybody, just come on in. I guess I can add, I think it's important to try. It might never, you might not accomplish it, but try to do this on a regular basis. So you're not getting to the point where you like really need that, you know, time away, but try it. So for those who are lucky enough to have kids in school and maybe a flexible work schedule, like I do, I try to take the 20 minutes before I go pick my son up to just, 
I do not answer emails. I do not read a book about disabilities or <laughs> anything else. I don't listen to a podcast about it. I listen to a podcast for myself um, or read a book for myself or watch a terrible TV show for myself um, for 20 minutes before I go pick him up. And that's completely free because I go to the library. <laughs> um, but also if you don't have kids in school, like even just having one day a week that you make a really easy dinner. Like maybe you have frozen pizza one day a week or you have box mac and cheese one day a week so that you're not spending that extra time on that. Um, and or plan, you know, meal planning and all the stuff that goes into that. Um, our kids will all live if they have once a week pizza. <laughs> and go ahead, Pearl. No, I was just gonna say the once a week pizza thing. I my kids wanted popcorn for breakfast one day and I was like I don't care here you go like corn's on a plant it's technically a vegetable <laughs> like that was how I sold it to myself but yeah I'm with you on it 100% keep going I'm sorry no I like that about popcorn I like the um it's it's a way to eat salad by hand because corn's a vegetable yeah exactly and it's gluten-free <laughs> I think we also can't be afraid to, you know, let our kids watch a show or part of a movie after school, like on Fridays or something, just for half hour or whatever you need to maybe finish up work or, you know, TV can be a free babysitter for a little bit and then we're all going to be okay. But just to finish up, like whatever last end of the week stuff you need to get done so that you can feel better about the weekend and where that's going. There we go. I was trying to hit the mute button. Sorry. I was even going to suggest too, uh, you bring up a good point with like screen time, right? And TV. Who's to say that you can't, unfortunately, we're still in Paw Patrol, like at our home, right? So like, why can't we watch Paw Patrol while I'm giving myself a mani petty? You know, it, it's it's two birds with one stone. I'm still spending time but they're ignoring me anyway. You know, I'm just mom. I'm just there if they need something. You know, they ignore me if, you know, Marshall and Chase are on TV saving, you know, Adventure Bay or whatever. I'm just chop liver. So if they don't need me at that point, then still keeping an eye on them, but doing something for myself, right? And so... You can read a book while your kids are watching their favorite movie or, you know, playing with their favorite toys or playing with their favorite, you know, video game or tablet game or or whatever it is that they're doing. And you also, you know, when we have our kids, they always say sleep when the kids sleep, right? Like that's always like the first piece of advice that they give us. But I don't know, for me, it never clicked to continue that with do stuff for me when my kids are doing stuff for themselves like yes still take care of stuff for the house yes still deal with the horrible laundry that just never seems to end and socks just don't have their buddies and you just have all these mismatched socks and it's just whatever and it stresses you out but while the laundry's going you know, do something for yourself if your kids are occupied with something that they enjoy. Um, have have your own picnic, like by yourself, you know, or or invite somebody over or, you know, our little girls and some of our little boys like to have tea parties with their stuffies. Why aren't we doing this? Why is it not normal for us to do? I I don't like to adult. I still build forts and color and drink juice boxes when my kids are at school. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a grandma now and I'm still like, why do they get to have all the fun? And it doesn't cost me anything to grab a sheet and attach it to a box fan. So it does a little floaty thing. And it makes me feel like I'm in something cool. And yeah, the, the little waves and stuff. And, you know, just, Forget about responsibilities for a little bit is awesome. Yes, Zoe, forts, 
my big yes with the pillows and the curtains with the twinkle lights like you can buy twinkle lights at walmart for less than ten dollars and they're battery operated which means you can shove them anywhere and sunny d comes in little boxes now and little bottles and you know we all had sunny d as a kid like why not live that again live those memories and kind of just remember how it is to be carefree you can find that even that could be helpful to just recharge and i think that is such an important point pearl because i know that a lot of families i talk to from that moment of diagnosis it's felt like this hamster wheel that you're just going 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 but you're never getting anywhere and we get so caught up in all of the needs, which are huge and which can be life-threatening. But we forget that the, the the better we are, the better we give. And and so that whole idea of finding what recharges me. And that may be something that you haven't thought about for 10, 15 years because you've been in the middle of this constant crisis. And so trying the sunny D trying the pillow fort, trying the coloring book, just try different things. Think of the things that you used to do as a kid that you really enjoyed and just try redoing them. See if there's still something that charges your soul, recharges your energy. I just, I love that, that idea about recharge. And, you know, you can always get ideas from other moms too. Um, I always like to talk to the newborn moms because they're still naive and they have these grand ideas of what they're going to do and how they're going to achieve it. And, you, and it's, it's just, it's adorable because I remember feeling that way too, when I had my first kid, right? Like thinking that I, I was going to have this unlimited supply of energy and I do have an unlimited supply of energy. It's just not me. It's my kid who is like an energizer bunny that's solar powered that just never stops. So I do have an endless supply of energy. It's just not me. It's, I mean, I have it in my house, but it's my kid. And now I'm, you know, trying to play catch up. So but talking with them about, you know, oh, I'm going to do, I'm still going to have spa days and I'm still going to go to the movies and I'm still going to go and, you know, have, you know, happy hour or go for the two for Tuesday or or whatever. But it gives you ideas of what you can try because you know the reality of your life, but it gives you ideas of things to try that may be you forgot about as your journey continued with being bombarded with specialists, doctor's appointments, therapies, handling the grief, because grief is a whole other cycle. And it is hard to navigate. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And we we wouldn't be here. Like we, we wouldn't Whoever's have to in charge of planning the family panel topics for 2024. Please write grief on our topic list. And I know Felicia would love to talk with us about her experiences with grief too. But yes, yes, I think we need to talk more. I, about, I agree. About grief. I agree. Um, and denial. Yes. It's okay to be in denial. It's, you know, I was, I was the river in Egypt for a while with my kid's diagnosis. That's okay. And, you know, it's just part of the journey. And there's no wrong way to do this journey. As long as you're actively trying to still do the journey. You can take breaks, you can take pauses, you can sit down and relax and you can, you know, look around and observe the scenery but as long as you're putting one foot in front of the other and continuing your journey, then there's no wrong way to do this. Right. Right. It's the moving forward. Just keep, yeah. you know, and if you need to stop for just a moment, but remember, sometimes when I stop, it's a lot harder to keep going. It's a lot harder to get back going. And right. so I, I just, I love that. Just keep, you know, keep moving. You're not going to do it wrong. 
Um, for me, sense. I have found that I have to set aside a certain day for me to do what I what I need for me. And I call them mommy meltdown Mondays because I can just, the kids go to school. Mondays are horrible already. Like everybody just meh because everybody has to go back to work and the kids are mad because they have to go back to school and it's just a horrible crap day anyway. So I have mommy meltdown Mondays and that's when I have my forts. That's when I have my sunny D. That is when I color. That is when I do my bath stuff. That is when I, you know, in the summer I do my stargazing. Sometimes I crochet. Sometimes I read a book or I listen to an audio book if I want to continue to do, you know, something else. Like there's so many things that are easily accessible now with the technology that we have that you just got to get creative and if you have a hard time thinking of ideas I always like to go back to what did I like to do when I was younger and that gives me a starting point point. and I always say when in doubt take a walk no matter what the weather, just take a walk, <laughs> kind of brings us back. <laughs> then we can figure out all the stuff that Pearl's talking about and be creative. <laughs> or or a drive, you know, because I, I, I hate walking. <laughs> I like to stay fluffy, so I'm hard to kidnap. Um, but, you know, just um, if, if you've, like, if there's a, an issue that prevents you from being physically active, then you know, still do something that will let you zone out for a bit, but still have that mentality of what you would get from taking a walk. And Amanda, I'm just going to have you take the walks for me and, and I will eat the donuts and just tell you how many laps I need you to do. And we'll you just... can walk and eat donuts, you know, <laughs> and coffee. I, you know, I, I can, <laughs> but then I would lose the calories and then <laughs> I would get kidnapped and, and it's just, it would be sad. So I'm just going to stay fluffy and then nobody can take me and my husband will be stuck with me forever. <laughs> yeah, that and, and, you know, Pearl, don't take this personally, but me eating and walking at the same time is a dangerous endeavor. Um, it's, I will run into things. I will fall down. I will hurt people. So I have to be careful if I'm walking, I should really concentrate on that. I feel you on that. Doing two things at once is not my forte unless it's talking smack and being sarcastic. Like, <laughs> I can do that. I can do those two things at the same time very easily. But being like walking and chewing gum, if you girls ever see me in person, like just stop me. Like it's not a pretty sight. It's, right. it's, I'm such a klutz, which, that's why I like my forts and my coloring because it doesn't require me to move much. But um Rose Pearl, before you go on, I see Rose is also unmuted. Yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite her into the conversation. I, I don't know if she meant to unmute, but she did. So now she has to talk. Now she has to talk. Ha ha Rose. Right. <laughs> As I say, I don't know if she meant to do that either. Oh um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh so hey everybody. Um I don't think it's going to come as a surprise that those that know me on here or watching it, I, when Pearl and Amanda were talking, I'm sitting here scrambling thinking, okay, I literally just had a conversation with my husband's cousin that is very similar to ones that I've had with other family members of what do you guys do for fun <laughs> in everything. And I'm like looking around because we were at the farm at that time and I looked around and I said we come here and he's like but no but you work and so as you guys were talking I was just thinking that the amount of times that our smiles we we get told our smiles come back to our faces when we start talking about the farm or going up to the farm even though it's work even though harvest is not done because it insists on raining every time we go up there. Um, I would say that a different kind of work can also be refreshing for myself. Um, and the really cool thing is, is we've always tried to 
it incorporate our kids to the safety level that it can be because like when they're younger you know obviously you don't want them around working machinery and stuff and things that you can't see them when you're backing up and everything but um what they can do and everything and now that they're my height they're taller than me the even more fun thing is like last weekend when we had the weekend between sports seasons and plays and forensics and all that stuff that the older two both looked at dad and I and said we're coming with you and you know it's it's not a chore it's not anything they sign on they go with us so I would say my advice is just like the other two said find what you used to do to bring you joy but also try to incorporate your kids with it um and the reason I say that is because especially for myself to be able to see my kids enjoying what was my history my my teenage daughter the other day came into our bedroom oh I was old laundry and said mom I've only ever known you as an adult (laughs) was so freaked out about that and I'm like but sweetheart, you know, parts of me through stories. And because when we're working and everything, you know what I used to do, you know what I used to love. And she's like, yeah, but you've always been this tall (laughs) and stuff. And she's like, you've known me my whole life. And so that's my other break is when my kids come to me. So my younger two that are quote unquote neurotypical, I challenge that some days, but you know, (laughs) um they are part me so you know um I, I hear people say don't make your kids your friends but yet make them kind of your friends you know because for them to all of a sudden invade your space and feel so comfortable that they can tell you everything about their day I that's what brings me joy um I know you need a separation from your kids and everything and so forth. Um, The easiest way for me to do that is to put what I'm binge watching on Netflix on and walk away from it because that annoys them enough that they leave me alone because they're like, you're not even watching it. I'm like, yeah, I am. I can tell you everything that's happened. They're like, okay, but if I show you a picture, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to know them because I haven't seen them. (laughs) But that's, I guess that's just, what I would say is echo what Amanda and Pearl and Tim have been to saying of find what is your passion, but I'm going to go the next step and say, introduce your family to it because much like Pearl, where my husband and I live, neither one of us grew up here. And as a matter of fact, I'll even extend that because I know some family members will never find these videos and say you need to make your own family um even if they do live by you because sometimes your own family are the ones that are not going to support you the most on this journey and that's going to hit hard so you're going to need those other people when that hits because you're you grew up thinking your siblings or cousins or aunt and uncles was all that in the handbasket and sometimes this journey is just too much for them to join you on but that's when you find your pearls and your manda and you call them and you say girl i am breaking open a bottle of something so just shut up and listen (laughs) but i don't know that's what i got but i i agree with you rose that um we don't have family that blood family right relatives that help us um that don't want to help us that have actively said no um and so we decided to go low and no contact with the majority of the family and it's more of if you can't join me on my journey then I need to make room for people who can. And and there's nothing wrong with that. It's setting up the boundaries of what you need in your life for that moment. And if things change in the future, 
You can reevaluate them. Nothing is ever set in stone, but you have to do what is good for you and your family during the present, right? And, and the reason that it's called the present is because it's a gift, right? And we have to enjoy it and can't worry about the past. Can't change it. Can't worry about the future too much because it's don't know what's going to happen though if anybody knows the next pick six lotto numbers for sure let me know because that's what i need for future knowledge is just just give me the pick six um but i'm with you rose you have to create your own your own family yeah and i would say sometimes um the guilt that comes in from all that gets to be overwhelming. And that's when you do need to reach out to people that have been there, done that, because you keep wanting to explain why you're doing and saying what you're doing and saying. Until you get to a point where you're like, huh, this is, I, I feel very light all of a sudden. So- yeah. Yeah. And and but and that's where these discussions come in handy because going through the hurt of setting those boundaries, right? How can we then still take care of us when we don't have resources that many other people might have and we might not have like the funds or the time. And I'm with you with doing work that is enjoyable because work that is enjoyable and passionate is not work at all. And and that's if you can ever find that in life, you are truly, truly blessed. I have to say, because not many people can. And so if you find it, definitely, you know, hold on to it with both hands and don't let it go. And, right. and, and, you know, and remember that we're all human. We're going to fumble. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to screw up and that's okay. How else are we supposed to learn? Like I learned not to put my phone by the bathtub. Because apparently that's a danger, according to my husband. And so now I had to set it on like the bathroom counter. But I just wanted to hear music while I was going sleepy night night in the tub. Because all I was worried about was what I wanted to do with my spa time. And I didn't think like how to do it safely. Right. And so then he had to give us two cents, which he won that battle fine. He was actually right on something. I'll give him that win. But, you know, it's. It was a mistake on my part that was dangerous, right? But that's okay. I learned from it. I moved on from it. And now I enjoy my mommy meltdown Mondays in a safer manner. I'll say incorporating my husband in the times when I'm doing something for me is even more enjoyable because I, I'll be honest, there's always that guilt of, okay, the kids have had 100% of my attention for the past two, three days. And I know he and I need to connect on some level, but dude, that sounds like work, right? Until mm -hmm. he's in the combine and I'm in the tractor with the wagon and you know, it takes about six minutes to unload his combine into my wagon. And in that six minutes, we can take our little walkie talkies and just shoot the shit, you know, and uh, sorry, Tim, I just swore on your recording, but you know, it's, uh -huh. it is, it is what it is, <laughs> but All right. to be able to have, have that time where we're being productive because that's us. I mean, if we're not like probably you were saying, you know, under twenty dollars, you know, and stuff. If we're not doing something productive, that just adds more stress to he and I. So, you know, which which brings to the point I guess I'm trying to make is we can give you our suggestions, but you need to find your own. You need to find your own, or it just creates more stress. And just be, this is what I'm doing, you know? I agree. A lot of people would not like the things that I like doing um, in my budget. 
And just like with Amanda with her walks, I'm like, no, you can do that. I'll just eat my donuts. But you, you know, and but definitely don't also be afraid to try something new. If the stuff right. from your past right. doesn't work out, try something new. Right. Like the 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 anxiety and and the, and the and the fear of trying something new can be changed to adrenaline and incitement of learning something new and maybe finding something out about yourself that you didn't know before. And even that can be refreshing and fulfilling. Those are great last comments from Pearl. Anybody else? Um, some last comments before we continue on with our day. I really enjoyed this conversation. So my overall takeaways include, hey, remember what you did as a kid and see if that's still fun. If not, go ahead, as my wife used to tell our kids all the time, T-R-Y, try, just T-R-Y. Um, so thank you all for, for joining us. Um, you know, also when in doubt, take a walk or a drive. Um, along with uh, pillow forts, it takes deliberate action. You deserve it. You deserve to have that time out um, for those moments. You deserve to enjoy something. It's okay to have joy. And I hope that you'll find it this week in some way. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you guys again later. Bye-bye.